Okay, what do we got? Anything uh, that you'd like to discuss? Uh, Coach, is there any up any updates on uh, Chris Hilton and CJ Daniels? Uh, CJ will be probable. Practiced again today. Looked good. Chris will be out. Brian, um, Whit Weeks obviously had such an impact. What what do you like about his game? What's enabling him to play at the level that he is and impact the game the way he is? Um, you know, he's a, he's a first of all uh, a very good athlete. His athleticism allows him to play fast, instinctive, um, you know, do things in pass coverage, cover, you know, tight ends down the field. Um, and, and he plays with an energy and in kind of that um, throwback, if you will, at the linebacker position that, that generates a lot of excitement amongst the group. So, you know, it's kind of what we were talking about with other players. Do they elevate the other players around them? And, and I think when Witt's in the game, he elevates the other players around him. And, and I think that that's what he brings more than anything else. Um, it was uh, six replays, I believe, in the game the other night. Yeah. Really long game. I mean, we all threw a lot of passes. They threw a lot of passes. But um, would you like to see it streamlined at all? Maybe coaches go to coaches' challenges? Or are you happy with, with it? Like, let's get it right no matter what, what it takes. I've gone on record, I'll, I'll go on record, and I've gone on record in our, our meetings as well. I believe that you should replay scoring uh, plays and change a possession. Um, and I think the coaches should have a challenge. Uh, they keep the challenge. Uh, if it's successful, they lose the challenge if it's not. I think that streamlines the game. I think it then goes to critical um, decisions in the game. Other than that, I think we're wasting time with all the replays, yes. Uh, Brian, back to Witt. I guess maybe in the preseason, was it hard for you guys to, to keep him off the field, or was there still, uh, I guess, a little bit more development that he needed in order to get to, obviously, where he is now? Yeah, I mean, the linebacker position is such that you know, when it comes to fitting a gap, like linebackers have a gap that they have to be in. And, you know, he plays fast, he plays physical, and he plays to the edge of being free. And sometimes that free means, um, I know I got that gap, but I, I think I can go make that play. And I think it was just reeling that, that in a little bit. Um, and, and I think he's done a really nice job. So where we were in camp to where we are now was probably reeling in a little bit of that freedom and getting it much more in tune with where he needed to be within this system of defense. When you're moving that front a little bit, you know, and we'd like to move the front much more than we have over the last few years, you know, you really have to be conscious of the gap that you have. And, and I think he's done a really nice job of um, growing, if you will, with, with the defense that, that Blake has installed. Uh, Coach, how's Trades taking to uh, wide receiver so far this week? I, I think he'll, he'll do well. I mean, I, I think, you know, first of all, you know, his – you can't you can't teach him in in two weeks like all the receiver you know routes and positions. So we're gonna we're gonna keep it um, you know to a minimum in terms of what we're doing, but make it impactful, right? Um, I think it's important that he gets on the field. I think it's important that that he's part of the game plan and that when you walk away, you go, who's that guy? But we can't get him out there and, and have it that he's making mental errors and not getting lined up and, and putting us in a position where we're slowing down the offense. So we, we think we found that spot, and I think he's handled it really well. So it, it's, and, and look, this is a, a young man that hasn't played a ton of football. Uh, I think we've got to keep that in mind. And he's picked it up really well. So I, I'm excited to watch him play. 
got two if I can. What are your recollections of Landon Jackson uh, when he was here and mm. you didn't have him? I never met him. Okay. I, I, he wasn't here. Um, but I can tell you what I see on film. He's got a motor, man. He just keeps going and going and going. And I remember from last year when we played him, and it, it's the same thing. I mean, he is – I don't want to say he's self-made, but – you know, he, he has really worked for everything, and uh, you respect a player like that. And then you talked about it being a growth game for Garrett. What did you see this week out of him? I, I think more of the same. You know, we're really working on, you know, some of the things that, you know, in similar ways that we worked on with Jaden last year at this time. So um, I think he's taken to it um, and has made some really good progress. I think that there's more – um, things that he's going to accomplish in the passing game in terms of putting himself in a better position to succeed even even more so at this point. So, uh, and he's so coachable and and takes to it right away and, and works on it on the practice field. So, um, you know, it's fun for a coach to go out there and have a guy like that to work with. Uh, Coach Tyree Adams was listed as out um, yesterday's report, and it looks like he had some sort of surgery just based on social media. How's, yeah, how's he had it going? A, um, you know, I, I don't want to get into the specifics because I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know the exact medical terms, but he had what would be considered like a sports hernia. Um, and, and there are, and again, don't, I mean, our doctors and, and trainers could give you more if you're looking for it, but he had to have surgery for that, so he clearly is out. Um, and it was something that happened in pregame, um, and it, crazy. I've never seen it happen in over 30 years. Um, guy who, you know, took all the reps with the second group and physically in good shape, lifting weights, and... Um, had this happen in, you know, pregame warm-ups. It's too bad. Um, but um, so he had to have surgery, and he'll be out. You talked a moment ago about the, I'm assuming, the pre-snap defensive line shift. Is that what you're referencing by moving the front? I'm sorry, I didn't. I you were talking about moving the front. Is that just that simple pre-snap shift that the defensive line makes? Who? Your defensive line. You said you'd like yes. to move the front a little bit more. Yeah, we, it, it, it's that plus the the actual movement um, at the snap of the ball. So you might be in a outside shade, and then you're moving to a, you know a new gap. The linebackers have to be able to adjust to those movements, and because you're moving, you know clearly a, a full man over you become vulnerable if those linebackers are not in tune with that. And that's in particular what we needed our linebackers to be much more, you know, disciplined with. All right, double it up. I, I looked like I was asking a question, but I had a mosquito in my ear. There's, but, there's been an onslaught of mosquitoes. I think they're, they're going for the cooler air inside, I think. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, uh, I think you said Monday, Braden Swinson didn't, he sometimes doesn't get the call, but he, he made like a great play on the goal line, right? Uh, how much is confidence, confidence seems to be a big part of, of defense, right? Uh, yeah. Just, just, just going out there and effort and confidence. How, how much has that improved? Obviously, it's improved from last year, but from the start of the season to now. Well, I just think he's thinking the right way. I think it, Oh sure, yeah. I I, th I think all of that is they they are thinking the right way about how to play defense and not overanalyzing. And there's not, you know, I was talking to Sage, you know, and you know, getting him to play fast is in in many ways, you know, keeping it easy for him too, and not having a lot of checks and not a lot of communication. Um, so. You know, the essence of great defense is that balance, right, where you have to structurally be in a position where you can defend some, you know, pretty intricate schemes, right? But at the end of the day, you've got to be able to let those kids play fast. And I think we've struck a pretty good note there where those kids now feel like they can line up and go without fear of, well, I'm in the wrong place. And I think you're seeing that with a lot of those players and in particular a guy like Swenson. 
Good. Thanks, guys.